the number one skill employees want out of a manager is something in your control. And most managers sabotage it. There was a young man, he was a businessman, and he was in a lot of trouble, financial trouble. Creditors were bearing down on him. His young company was really behind the eight ball. He didn't know what he was going to do, so he did what any smart man would do. He went for a walk, and he went down to a park nearby, and he's walking through this park. He's trying to figure out what he's going to do, and he sits on this beautiful red bench. And just about that time, an older man walked up and sat on the bench with him. And the older man said, it seems like something is bothering you. And the young man said, yes, my my company's in a lot of trouble and I don't know what I'm going to do. The old man said, well, I think I can help you. And he opens up his, pulls out a checkbook from his checkbook. He writes a check, he folds it up and he hands it to him. And he says, when you need it, use it. The young man gets up, he says, thank you. He walks back to his office. He, he opens up the check and it says $100,000 and it's signed Andrew Carnegie. He immediately was excited. He's like, my problems are gone. I can get out of this mess. But then he said, you know what? Instead of using it, let me put it in this safe over there and, I'll, and in case I really need it. And then he decided to start acting He knew he had this check in his check and he just said, you know what, let me do one thing today to renegotiate terms, come up with new products. And he started stacking his actions daily. In a couple weeks, he was in a better place. In a month, his business was in a much better place. In six months, the problems had almost all gone away. And he remembered when he was at the park, the man said, in one year, meet me on this bench. And he kept that date in his mind as his business got better, never cashing the check. One year later, he comes to the park. He's so excited to tell this man about how he had turned around his business. He's on the bench waiting. He looks up. He sees the man walking towards him. He's so excited to share the good news. And just about when he got close, a a young woman came running up behind him. He says, so, sir, I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. This man got out of the psych ward again. He loves walking around the park telling people that he's Andrew Carnegie. The young businessman couldn't believe what he saw. That check that he had in his bank that he was holding his hand was fake the whole time. But the key takeaway is that it provided him confidence. And it gave him the confidence to act differently than he felt. Sometimes we borrow our confidence, but the borrowed confidence doesn't sustain. See, the number one skill that employees want from their manager is confidence. Someone that believes in themselves first before they ask anyone else to believe in where they're going. Too many leaders get this wrong. They struggle with confidence. They don't know what they're doing to Build it. So let's take a a look at what confidence really is. Confidence is defined this way. Confidence is when you exude a self-belief that you believe in yourself and your ability to succeed. Confidence is a belief in oneself and your ability to succeed. It comes from a Latin word, which means to have full trust. See, confidence in leadership isn't every team member loves me. No, that's cockiness and arrogance. It's I'm going to lead them my best even if they don't. That's confidence. Because confidence comes from within. It's been said it's the memory of evidence and of success. It's like, I like to think of it a little bit like a grill. If you've ever started a a gas grill or even a propane grill, you have this igniter. You turn on the knobs and you hit that ignite button. The igniter is like a spark plug. That's not confidence. That's courage. 
the gas continuing to run, that's confidence. It's that belief in yourself that, that you're getting better, that you can do it, that you can cook that burger or that steak or whatever it is. It's the belief that you can be successful. And the reality is true confidence comes from within. And it's found in evidence and repetition. True confidence comes from within and it's found in evidence and repetition. Remember that idea of confidence is, is that memory of success. Well, there's a lot of people that have never had success. So what do you do? How can you be confident? Because most people will tell you what? Fake it until you make it. It's awful advice because it's not built on any real evidence. It's like a house built on sand instead of a strong foundation. Confidence has to be built from within and we get it from repetition and evidence. So what do you do if you don't have evidence? What if you do if you don't have that memory of success? I like Alex Hermosi. He said, you have to outwork your self-doubt. You have to outwork your self-doubt. I don't, I don't actually mind if you have that negative thought or you have that self-doubt, but you got to choose to outwork it anyways. That's how we build that real, true, inner self-confidence. Said differently, the rate of your work has to surpass the rate of your doubt. And when that happens, you create this gap. And that gap is confidence. That gap is a belief in yourself and your willingness and ability to succeed. Now, here's the, here's the tricky part. How do you get better at it? How do you build this inner self-confidence consistently to sustain yourself as a leader and as a person so other people can believe in you as well? Well, I think there's three key steps that you must take daily. And then there's a fourth step to ensure that confidence doesn't become cockiness or complacency. So the first thing that you can do to build your confidence daily is to have one action daily that provides evidence. One action daily that provides evidence. Because action breeds confidence. And in my coaching conversations and when someone's struggling with their confidence, there's one simple question that I ask them. What is one action that you took today that provides you evidence that you're making progress? Write that down. What is one action I took today that provides me evidence that I'm making progress? You see, I didn't say towards your outcome. I said progress. See, I want you to be impatient with progress and patient with outcomes. You should see some form of progress. You can't make progress without taking some sort of action. I want you to achieve your outcomes and that will absolutely provide some memory of success, but we can't guarantee the outcome. What we can guarantee is the right action and that action makes progress. So if you want to build your confidence every single day, like that gas meter in a, in a tank, we've got to do things every single day that provide evidence of progress. Because sometimes you're doing things just like a plant. You don't actually see it coming out of the ground, but it doesn't mean there's not something happening underneath that soil. You're the same way. Action is required because it breeds confidence. Number one, 
Take one action daily that provides evidence of progress. Number two, shed perfection. Perfection is defined as the process of improving something until it is faultless or as faultless as possible. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm not faultless and I never will be. The idea of perfection harms you. It doesn't help you. It's cruel because you can't ever actually achieve it. I love this story of one of the greatest tennis players of all time is Roger Federer. And Roger Federer was giving a commencement speech. And he asked the audience, he said, do you know the number of matches I've won in my career as what many say is the greatest tennis player of all time? The answer is 80%. Not perfect. And then he said, do you know the number of points that I've won in my career? 54%. See, the greatest tennis player of all time didn't win 100% of his matches, he won 80, and he barely won more than 50% of his points to win the 80% of matches. A far cry from being perfect. But we have this expectation in ourselves. Many times it's unfound. I have no problem of your expectation of wanting to be great, to get better, to improve. But the expectation to be perfect, it will demoralize you. It will destroy your confidence. You'll start to believe you're not good enough. I can't tell you the number of times I've played golf with people that are terrible at golf. 18, 20, 25 handicaps. They hit a bad shot and they lose their mind. They're not good enough to complain when they hit a bad shot. What they should be doing is celebrating when they hit a good one. Shed the idea that you have to be perfect. Shed the idea that you need to compare yourself to anybody else. Look in the mirror. Am I becoming a better version of myself? Am I getting better every single day? Not perfect. Number two. Shed perfection. Number three, squash the ant. Now, I'm not talking about that ant that I stepped on in my bathroom today that was the size of a dog. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about ant, automatic negative thoughts. You got to squash them. Look, in order to build confidence absolutely requires you to take action. And I'm not asked this mind that you have, it will think of things. It will bring up doubt. It will tell you why you're not good enough. It might even look at what's wrong, not what's right. I'm not asking you to control every single thought your mind has. That's impossible. But what I am asking you to do is how quickly can you turn that automatic negative thought into something positive? into something that isn't I can't, it's I haven't yet. It's not I'm going to fail, it says what if I succeed? It's not I'm not good enough, it's I need to keep working to get better. Those are squashing the negative thoughts, not beating yourself up for having them, but quickly being able to replace them and respond with something more positive. Now is the time to squash the ant. Recognize the thought for what it is and then choose to act differently than you think. I'm going to say that again. Recognize the negative thought for what it is and then choose to act differently than you think. Boy, that's just a metaphor of life. Beat yourself all up all you want. It's not going to help you. This life is too hard. And don't beat yourself up for having the negative thought. Just choose to respond differently. Act differently than you think. Act differently than you feel. And now you'll be 
the action oriented will provide evidence that you're making progress. Now you can start to see the circle. If you want to build your confidence every single day, it requires daily action. Number one, that provides evidence. Number two, we've got to shed the idea that we have to be perfect. And number three, we've got to squash the, uh, the ants. So we get from our physical action to our mental perfection to our heart and our mind in squashing that automatic negative thought. If you want to get better your confidence, that's what I need you to do. It's what I want us to do, myself included. And then lastly, once you get those right confidence and the steps going and you have that, that memory of success and you have evidence and you're doing the right things, it's going to get, you're going to, the confidence is going to grow. It's going to build. You're going to feel like a different version of yourself. That is exciting. But that confidence doesn't always stay that way. It can turn into cockiness or worse, it could turn into complacency. You think cockiness is when you think you're better than someone because you've gotten good at something. It's arrogant. No one likes to be around a cocky person. Complacency is when you think you've gotten good at something and you don't have another gear that you can get to. Too many people fall into the trap of complacency because they get a little good at something. But not you. Keep that confidence level, not cocky or complacent. And how do you do that? You put an iron council around you. I learned this story from the Marines and the Marines have this great idea called an iron council. And what it is, is a couple times a year, six, seven people around a leader in the, in the Marines, they get together and they share what the leader is doing well, what they're doing poorly, what they need to kind of start, stop and continue doing in a really healthy environment. It's not meant to beat the leader up. It's not meant to tear them to the ground. They can't get back up. It's a way to improve their self-awareness and to not allow that confidence to become cockiness or complacency. Who is your iron counsel? We need truth tellers in our life. And the people that avoid truth tellers are the ones that get cocky or complacent. You've got to find an iron council to put around you to ensure that your confidence doesn't become cockiness or complacency. Look, confidence is critical. Having that belief in yourself and your ability to succeed is something that cannot be replaced. And we've got to work intentionally to help build it daily. Think of that young professional that was in a really bad spot. That check was the, the spark. It, it helped give him some sort of internal confidence externally, but eventually he took that confidence from within. Your job is to build that confidence from within. That self-assuredness that's built on your action, not on false and empty words, but on evidence. One of my favorite quotes was from Henry Ford. He said, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. <laughs> so good. Whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. What Henry Ford was talking about was confidence. It's essential to your life and your career and to be successful. How willing are you to work at it every single day. Until next time, be a great leader at work and at